I'm going to read through this and I'll come back and uh, kind of set it up. Beginning in verse 5. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is, is born of water and of spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it, you hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it is coming, where it comes from, or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. First word we have there in, uh, in verse four, verse 5 is Jesus answered. So I want to go back and just do a little bit of background. What he's speaking of is uh, Nicodemus, who was a uh, he was a uh, he was a Pharisee, but he was a uh, uh, member of the Sanhedrin. He was a leader, and uh, it wasn't just a Pharisee; he was a leader. So, uh, I mean, he's one uh, the the uh, they could uh, they they would hold courts. They could hold people judge you know in judgment. Things about that were the Pharisees weren't necessarily able to do that, but they were in charge of the court systems. There, in, in. but anyway, he came to Jesus by night. Now you can say, did he come out so we wouldn't be seen? I don't know. Maybe a little, of, maybe a little of that. And and uh, be honest with you, if he's the he is the leader. I mean, the top dude there, and he probably busy through the day. I doubt he can get a little bit of time to speak to anybody. And the same with Jesus. You know he's busy. He's healing people and stuff all the time. He's always got an audience. So to be honest with you, I don't know how they could get a word in edgewise during the day anyway. So he can just, here to there, was he there to, was he there because he didn't want to be seen talking to Jesus? Or is he there because that's the only way you could talk to Jesus? Because the Bible doesn't really say one way or the other about that. But anyway, he was there, and he just he approached him by night, and he told him, "You know, you're a teacher. You're 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 a teacher from God, Rabbi. You know, you call him Rabbi. You're uh, from God, and we can tell that because of the signs and wonders that you were uh, that you're making. And there's no way that uh, if you if you're doing that, then there's no way you're not from God. So he agreed and and, and realized that he was a messenger of God. That he was from God, and." Uh, Jesus asked him the question. He, took, he didn't ask him a question. He told him, he said, I'll tell you the truth. Now, you can't, you can't uh, uh, inherit the kingdom of God. You can't get into heaven unless you're born again. And old Nicodemus said, man, how in the world can an old man like me get up in my mama's womb again and come back out? You know, that's what he was thinking. He said, you can't do that. He said, can you? And he said, yeah, can you? Can you do that? <laughs> See, he knew he was talking who he was talking to. And it was possible. If God wanted to get him back up in there, he could they can write back to a baby and start all over. You know, he could do that. But anyway, so that's what the Jesus answered him because he asked him, because he asked that question. How can a man go up back in his in, up in the womb like that? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of spirit. Now, I believe that we have just a contrast of, of two births. You have the spirit birth, birth and you have the natural birth. But I'm not so sure that he's uh, spending a whole lot of time talking about the, the, the water birth because there's a, uh, some scholars vary about that, whether he's talking about the adbionic fluid of, of childbirth <coughs> or, or if he's uh, talking about like a cleansing water. Uh, I really did write down the scripture I wanted to share with you. And that's from Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 24 through 27. It says this, For I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into, uh, into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and, will, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from, from all your filthiness and from all of, uh, all of your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a, a new spirit in, within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will be, and you will be careful to, to observe my ordinances. 
So I think that there's an element of both here because uh, the next verse is a few verses here. Christ does make a, uh, a distinction between the flesh birth and the, and the spirit birth. But uh, I believe that he's telling this guy because this guy knows the Old Testament. And as far as like the birth, that's not really mentioned that much. My phone is completely off. <laughs> it's not me again. Maybe I'll hold it up like this. Talk louder? You sure you want that? <laughs> Let me try this. I said, <laughs> get, trying to get this thing to read. All righty then. But I'm not so sure this, uh, I, I think it's more of the cleansing water that it's used for, like a cleansing, than, uh, than necessarily the birth that it's speaking of. Because it says, it, it says I'll just read that again, it says, uh, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless he is born of water and spirit. And, and I don't believe that this guy uh, that he's speaking to, he knew the Old Testament. And I'm sure he was probably thinking on the lines of, of verses like this from the Old Testament. That's neither here nor there because it does, he does make mention of this. In verse 6, it says, flesh uh, gives birth to flesh, uh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So... Spiritual cleansing is, is what he's speaking of here. The birth, uh, spirit gives birth to, to the spirit gives birth to spirit. Let me talk about this. Let me try from this side. It helps. <laughs> I usually go on that. I'm kind of a lefty when it goes going around the uh, pulpit there. But let me just come on this side just a little bit. See if that helps. But uh, if you look at it as in, as in verse, I, I thought of it like this, guys. When we're born in flesh. Because flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit, he said. If we give birth, when flesh gives birth to flesh, this starts out being an innocent little baby, right? And that baby grows up to be in a corrupt environment and becomes corrupt. So you go from innocence to corruption, right? That's just the nature of things. Uh, they're innocent for a while when they're first born, but somewhere along the line, they, they get the world gets in them and and they just uh, lose their innocence, so to speak, and, and they become more of a corrupt or unrighteous person. Birth from the Spirit is exactly opposite of that. Birth giving birth to Spirit is that you're born, well, we're born and we go from corruption to righteousness, corruption to innocence. It's exactly backwards and opposite. You see what I'm saying? I hope I didn't lose you right there, but... But that's what I wanted to know. So I think that's what he means by the flesh gives birth, uh, flesh gives birth to, to flesh, and spirit gives birth to spirit. And in verse seven it says, uh, uh, "You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again." Uh, Nicodemus he had been taught, guys, all of his life that the Old Testament ways, and that was that you uh, you had to, you had to. Uh, uh, get to, you had to earn your way into salvation. That's the way, it, that's the way it, uh, he had approached this thing. And it was hard for him to believe and swallow what Jesus was telling him. But Jesus told him, said, you shouldn't be amazed at that. Why? Because he should know the Old Testament enough to, to understand what Jesus is saying here. Amen? But uh, now with verse 8, and we're going to get into our outline now. Because it is, like I said, the title of the message is The, uh, the Wind of God. I even thought about uh, titling it the, the Wind of Change. The, the Winds of Change. Verse 8. The wind blows wherever it pleases. This is reference to the Holy Spirit when it says the wind. It's, it's, uh, Jesus is making a comparison of the wind versus the Holy Spirit. Guys, you cannot... Have, can anybody hold back the wind? God can. You try all you want to, you just can't do it. It's going to give you some resistance. You might be able to, to hold it back just a little bit, but it's going around you. It's doing something, but you can't hold it. God, let me tell you something. You can't stop the Holy Spirit when He gets ready to do something. You just can't stop Him. He's going to move in your life. In fact, if He gets on your heels, you... You might as well submit to what he's trying to get you to do because he's relentless 
And he's not going to stop. Amen. 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 So that's the first thing we know. We learn is that God's sovereignty. That means that he's the boss. The Holy Spirit's in charge. You ain't got a dog in the hunt. God is the one that's going to get after you. He does it through his Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Let's take the second one. Second part of this. You hear it sound. That means it's perceivable. Though we do not see the wind, we can perceive of it. We can see the Holy Spirit. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we can see the evidence of the Holy Spirit when it moves in people. Amen? The fruits of the Spirit is what I'm talking about. See, because when you accept Christ into your heart, when the Holy Spirit moves, then God, you can't help but do the right thing. He's going to make sure you do the right thing. And He's going to give you some fruit of the Spirit. And the, the, the ones that top that list is faith, hope, and love. That means we're going to have a new love for other people. Why? Because Christ Jesus told us, He gave us a commandment to love others as I have loved you. So we can't help but show some love. Amen? Reason you can't help but show it because the, the, the Spirit of the living God is living inside you. Amen? But there are other fruits of the Spirit. You ever, uh, have you ever just uh, been griping about, oh, I just, this traffic's bad, I just, that gun, I just, <laughs> uh, I'm just upset. You're, I'm like it on time. Don't y'all lie and say you're not. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm like it behind, you just let me get it behind the wheel. <laughs> it's like a demon. A uh, possessed person just took over that wheel. I, I'm just not the same person when I get behind that wheel. <laughs> I don't want to have the sticker on my on my back saying you like the fish and stuff. Because <laughs> I would definitely be uh, uh, giving God a bad name by some of the, the way I drive sometimes. But uh, but you ever get upset, you know, and you think, well, I just I'm just running late on this kind of stuff right here, and then you get up or, uh, a little bit later, and you see a, just a little bit, and you see this mass massive accident or something like that, and then you got to think, and you got to think, well, if I would have been just a little bit earlier, I'd have been in that wreck, or maybe you saw somebody cut in front of you, and, and you was already mad, and just a few seconds more, you'd have got hit. Or maybe they cut in front of you and, and you could have hit them. But guys, that's the sovereignty of God. And that's His, his, uh, that's his, uh, his spirit at work. The winds of change blowing across us and holding us back. See, He's all-knowing. And He'll protect us for those moments. You ever had some of those moments? I've had some of those moments. Nobody had any of them moments? <laughs> He's saying that I know some of you had some of those moments. Maybe you didn't even recognize it, but guys, I can assure you, it's happened. Because God is at work with all of us. And what did we learn a, a few uh, Sundays ago that, uh, that God works all things to the good of those who love, love Him and are called according to His purpose? Mm -hmm. He's working out the good. And that's the, that is the, the Holy Spirit, the winds of God moving through our lives. Amen. All right then. I didn't do it. I promise I did. <laughs> now the number three, God's uh, the the wind is, is uh, the Holy Spirit is mysterious. Its general direction can be uh, can be known, but it can't be precisely determined. Let's finish reading this and says, uh, I'm just going to read all of verse eight again. The wind blows wherever uh, wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where, it's, uh, where it comes from or where it's going. And that is so true about God, isn't it? God's ways are not our ways. That's what the Bible says. If you think you've got him figured out, you're wrong. Amen? Sometimes we think he ought to move a little quicker than he does, and he knows best, I can assure you. Uh, sometimes he says, wait just a little bit, and wait just a little bit. We're kind of anxious. We don't want to wait just a little bit. Amen. But uh, he is mysterious. God's ways are mysterious. You know, just, I think it just goes into putting all of his attributes together, his sovereignty, his, his all-knowing, you know, his omniscience. 
You put all that together, it's mysterious. We can't know the ways of God. Not 100%. The only thing we can know for sure is that he, what his, uh, his uh, great will is. His great will is that all should not perish but come to the saving knowledge of Christ. <coughs> That's his will. That no one perish. That's what the Bible says. But his accepted will is that it's up to us. Now, God knows who's going to accept him and who's not. I don't know. You don't know. So we are to be... Uh, Doing his work. You know, another, uh, I got to think about this too. So let me get it weird. I got to think about this too. Uh, the word of God, I mean, the, just the way God moves sometimes, you can't, like I said, you can't see it. You can't see it, but you can, guys, you can see us at the evidence of it. And what I mean by, like that, what I mean by that is the great movement, spiritual movements that have happened through human history. Now, I think about old Billy Graham, man. He would have a, he'd get prime time, buy prime time, not the seconds, but he bought prime time for his, uh, his, uh, uh, his rallies. And I remember watching those things, and it was just thousands of people that would come down to, the, to, the, uh, to, to that uh, stadium or the, or the football field, whatever he was in. And they would accept Christ into the heart. See, that's the wind of God moving right there. Guys, I, I'm looking forward to him doing that here at our church. I'm looking forward to it. Because I think he can and I think he will. <coughs> I think he wants to. Not just moving in, 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 the, in a way like that, but in our lives. No, I can't count how many times I've been touched by God. I've experienced Him. You know, there's a difference between being saved and being moved by God. There's a difference between being saved and submitting yourself as a living sacrifice before Him so that He can put you into service. I wonder how many of us here today have done that, have taken the time like we learned last week, to make ourselves present ourselves as a living sacrifice before God. To use according to His will. Like I told you, I do that every morning. I want to make sure that I'm in God's will and not in His way. But the wind of God is what we're talking about here today. Nicodemus Pretty, there's some evidence right here, like in verse 9. I know it's not up there, but in verse 9 it says, How he answered back to Jesus, How can this be? Nicodemus asked. There's evidence right there that he would he rejected what Christ said. You guys, the evidence of him being saved sometime between there and when Christ died on that cross is evident as well. Because he was there with Joseph uh, of uh, Arimathea. I believe is what I'm saying. I, told, I think I'm saying that right. But he was there with him, Amen, and uh, for uh, and helping with with Christ's body. So somewhere along the line, he believed, or at least he had great respect for him. I, I'm holding that for he believed. Essentially, what Christ is telling him, and the reason he said born again, you have to be born again, is this. All of this stuff, what he was telling Nicodemus, all of this stuff that you've learned all through your life, you need to let go of that, go back to the beginning, and relearn everything, because what you learned back there is wrong. I immediately, when I thought about that, I, 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 was, I was drawn to the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was also a, a, a member of the of the uh, of Pharisee, and I think he was in the, uh, the Sanhedrin as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure he did because he uh, Paul's job was to take letters from the authorities and and have control over the the new uh, ch Christian church coming up, and he would put them in prisons. He would have them put to death, things of that nature. But Paul had to relearn everything because he was wrong. Christ opened his eyes when he blinded him and let it and showed him, yeah, this ain't the way it's got to be. And he's telling Nicodemus the same thing right here. You've got to be born again, Nicodemus. 
You've got to go back to the beginning and drop all of this stuff that you've learned through your childhood because this is the truth. This is the truth. It's not you don't earn your way in there. It's all through me and through me only. Paul realized that. In fact, Paul was a... I think it's a, in 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 12, where Paul, Paul speaks of, did you know the Lord gave him a, a thorn in his flesh? You know, I believe that, this, that thorn in his flesh was a, a, just a reminder that the devil, because it says uh, it, it, it was a, 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 a messenger from Satan is what it says right after this. And it speaks about his hardships and things of that nature. Never does it speak about a physical uh, ailment or anything like that. But it says the thorn in the flesh. I believe, personally, I believe that it's uh, that messenger from the devil, from Satan, that messenger from Satan, was God allowing the, the devil to do what he does best and accuse us. Just to remind Paul, hey, don't think you're all that in a bag of chips here, buddy. Don't think you're that. Just keep him in check. All of this today that we're speaking of is about asking Christ to come into your heart. This is basically what it is. The rebirth, because here's the, here's the thing, guys. Whatever we've learned through our life, maybe, it's, maybe somebody's told us that Muhammad is the way to get to heaven or maybe Buddhism. This, you just name it. New Ageism. Some other kind of ism. Any other, there's a lot of isms out there. But uh, we have got to go back to the beginning our, our, ourselves. And we've got to unlearn what we learned so we can learn the truth. See, that's what re being reborn is. Going back to the beginning. Having a new life. Amen. I'm going to give you an opportunity, guys. Everybody an opportunity right here today if you have not done that. Because I'm telling you, that's, that's square one right there. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have not made a profession of faith, if you have not asked Christ to come into your heart, guys, then this is a, you, you're probably like Nicodemus. You're wondering, well, how can this be? I just don't understand. I always try to say this. and uh, I know how my salvation message was about that, uh, my plight. I know that I could not turn to the left or right without running into God. Somebody was talking about God to me until I finally gave in. See, that's that, that's that uh, the, 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 the spirit, the wind of change, which is the Holy Spirit coming in. Holy Spirit's messing with you. He's, he's dealing with you until you finally say, you know what? I give in. I want Jesus in my life. And you cry out to Him. I wonder if you have been experienced, anybody here has been experienced that? Maybe the last week or two, a month. You know, this is a, just a relentless, I don't know, just a, something that's nagging at you. Just can't get past it. See, that's God, Holy Spirit, and He's dealing with you. He's working on you. He's got your heart ready for the seed here today. That seed of salvation. This is the time of our service where the, the altar is open. If you got something that's weighing heavy on your heart, then bring it up here, guys. Give us an opportunity as your family to come right beside you and, and help you go through what you're, you're going through. You can ask Jesus right into your heart, right where you're sitting. You don't have to come for there again, guys. I'm, I'm urging you if, uh, if the the Holy Spirit is the, uh, the wind of God is urging you to come forward. Don't ignore it. Amen. If you want to ask Christ in your heart, you can do it right where you're sitting, guys. Just every head bowed, every eye closed, just say a prayer like this and mean it from your heart. First, admit to Him, Lord, I'm a sinner. Right now, Lord, I turn from that sin. And I'm agreeing that you're right and I'm wrong and I want to do things your way. So 
So Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart. I receive you by faith into my spirit. I believe you died on that cross for my sins. As you rose back to life, you're living in me now. I recognize you as my God, my Lord, and my friend. From this moment forward, I will serve only you. In Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. Said that prayer for the first time.